So yes, we do have um, classes coming up. The next class is going to be March 4th. It's going to be learning how to read and nutrition label. We're going to deep dive into it. So it's going to be part hybrid. You know, the first part you, we can do through Zoom. You're going to learn how to read labels, but then it's going to be interactive activities here. So we've got two different activities to do that we're going to be doing together as a group. It's going to be lots of fun. So let me get this off of here. Move you over. All right, I guess we're going to move you up there. All right, so let's talk about, first of all, what is whole food plant-based? And that is a, we're talking about eating foods. Hi, no problem. This is your first class? Yeah. Okay, give me one second. Okay, sorry. So let's talk about what it is. Just a quick review, quick recap. So whole food plant-based, we're talking about eating foods that are whole, unrefined, minimally refined, okay? We're talking about eating fruits, vegetables. You know, grandma was right. Eat your fruits and veggies, right? Grandma was right. We're talking about eating starches. Oh, I can eat starch? Yes. Yes, okay? And the people that are counting carbs, you're doing yourself an injustice. And look at long-term what you're going to be doing to your body. For any of those paleo or keto people, please look at the research and look at what it's doing to you long-term, okay? Um, so yes, carbohydrates is one of the three macronutrients. Anka, what are the three macronutrients? Come on, pop quiz. Carbs, proteins, and fats. Yep, Anka is actually taking right now the Cornell University course that you can get your certification in plant-based, learning about plant-based. So they have a whole program there in nutrition. So you get your nutrition certificate when you're done. So you're eating foods that are basically as close to nature as possible. It's not to say that you're not cooking them. Yes, that I, I adore hot foods and, and meals. And I find the variety is so much more than ever before. So it's amazing. So you, you look up in the upper left-hand corner, those are my lemon chia seed pancakes. Those are to die for. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I nailed it on that recipe. <laughs> really nailed it. Um, and those are those are barbecue cauliflower. And I gave them to the, to the carnivores. That's my family. Um, I gave them to the carnivores. And they're like, they're chowing these babies down. They're going, wait, wait, this is plants? They, I mean, it has a very similar texture. It's crazy. But yeah. And soups and mac and not cheese. Oh my gosh, so good, okay? So and before we begin this whole thing, I just wanna say we're going to, we do have a pod here. We are now an official pod, Plant-Based Cape Cod, okay? We have a Facebook group called Plant-Based Cape Cod, right? And we have a group that meets together and we join together for, um, to be, to be uh, um, just to socialize, we're having, Mar no, May 7th at 7 o'clock, we're hosting this movie. This is a, 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 a clip from that movie, not a clip, but a, a screenshot from that movie. That is Dr. Lori Marbus. And in this movie, it's called From Food to Freedom. They took six people who are type 2 diabetics, been on insulin for years, and in 10 days, reversed it. 10 days. Okay, so, and the movie also ties in the factor that, for example, when you start to look at changing your diet, it is so profound and so powerful. And if you look at the people who died of COVID, they all had underlying factors, okay? The people who didn't had no issues. I mean, they got sick, not to say, but, and I interviewed several, a family that did have COVID, 100%, there's three generations in the same family. Grandma never got it, and she was this previously the sickest. Then when they went plant-based, she had, they were going to take her in for a triple bypass. She reversed and, and healed that. Uh, they couldn't do it because she was her kidneys were starting to go and starting to have issues. That completely reversed, and she healed that. She lost, I don't know, 40 pounds. Um, completely, you know, she never got the COVID at all. 
Her husband did three days, 102 fever done. Their kids had it for three days, 102 fever. Their children, one day, low grade fever done. And that was right in the beginning of COVID. So anyway, so they're tying that together in that movie. But I need you to understand that if you go plant-based and do this seriously, especially if you're on medication for, for diabetes, you know, type two diabetes, or if you're hypertension, you're dealing with high blood pressure, if you're on medications, you will need to be monitored by a doctor. And the reason being is that if you take this seriously and go plant-based, well, like in 10 days, your blood chemistry will change. And most likely you will need either less medication or get off of it. That's how serious this is. Okay. Here's the problem though. <laughs> you tell your doctor, they're not going to understand. They're not going to know. They're not going to realize the power of what's at the end of your fork. They're not going to realize that. So I just wanted to say to you, uh, most doctors are not trained in nutrition at all which just seems like crazy, crazy to me that this high performance vehicle, they're not trained in what goes in and has an impact on it. They're not. Or if they are, they're trained in like, like lack of nutrition, like, like scurvy. Okay. I think we got scurvy down, you know, but that's what they're taught. It's like, oh, Dr. Vitamin C is going to give you scurvy. I think we got that. I don't think we have to worry about that now. We got it. We're good. So the material, material presented today is only for informational and educational purposes, not for rendering medical advice. Just wanted to get that out there. Anyway, so let's talk about, and, and, and if you've been here and heard this, that's my car. It's going to have the license plate. It's going to say eat plants. Okay. You'll see me going down with six. What was that? That was Jean going to the next <laughs> presentation. Anyway, uh, beautiful car and kerosene, fantastic fuel. But if you put that kerosene into that car, I will cry because you're going to kill that car. That'll be a sad day, especially something as beautiful as that car. So that's kind of what we're doing to ourselves when we're eating meat, fish, dairy, eggs, highly refined foods, you know, because a lot of these things now are coming out as vegan. Okay. And, but they're very, very processed and they're not going to be helpful for you. Like the Beyond Burgers. Okay. The animals are doing the Snoopy happy dance. Woohoo! Thank you for not killing me. You know, we're there. They're good. They're good. But in terms of health, those are not helpful to you. It's not going to be good. It's a good transition food, you know, to help you get into the, to the plant-based world. It's a good transition food, but in terms of health, it's not going to be a good one. Okay. So um, today, normally I would do cooking demos. I've done, you know, a lot of classes and especially at Plant City, if you know where Plant City is in Providence, Rhode Island. I did a lot of classes there, but I don't know, it's like crossing the bridge anymore. It's like, don't want to do that. <laughs> want to stay here. Anyway, so next best thing is we're going to learn how to make mushroom chili. So I couldn't have the smells and the scents and give you the demo, but you'll get to see how to make this. So.
Okay, so I topped that with a little bit of nutritional yeast, which gives it a crazy, cheesy flavor. It's delicious, okay? So again, that would be something I would batch cook on the weekend with my husband. My husband, we have what, I, what we call shop, chop, and prep, okay? So Fridays are, we look for recipes. Well, I do. I'll just leave it at that. I look for the recipes, make a shopping list. We go grocery shopping. Then we go Saturdays, get the food ready, you know, and I air dry. Moisture is not your friend, okay, when you're prepping the food. So you want things to, like, I'll wash celery, I'll let it air dry, I'll wash my peppers, cut them up, let them air dry. I have a vegetable drying mat, just let them sit out and dry until all the moisture has gone. And then I put them into Ziploc bags with a piece of paper towel, just to absorb some of the moisture. And that way you can get a lot much longer life out of your foods. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is, yes, and I can't remember it. <laughs> there is, and I forget the name of it because, and the question from the, from the audience was, what is a good uh, vegetable broth? Because you're gonna learn, especially in nutrition label reading class, most of them, a lot of them have oil in it, okay? So that's one thing we want to make sure we don't have oil. And then the other thing is salt, ridiculously high, even if it's no salt added, okay? So I get the brand, It's there's a brand, it's, I don't know if all Stop and Shop's carrying it, but there is a brand at Stop and Shop and I can't remember it because I just found it. And it was the lowest one I have seen out there in for all of them. So, um, but I can't remember the name of it. So go ahead. Okay. Right. And and it's easy to do. It, yeah. You know, like you said, you just collect all these scraps and you put throw them into the freezer. You know, you have a Ziploc bag in the freezer and you carry it. You know, put all your scraps in there and then you put it in and then you make a big broth of it. Then you can freeze it, right? And one of the things you can do, and I love these, they have the silicone, we're going to talk about that later today, but they have these silicone muffin trays that you can just pour some into that, freeze it, and then you've got individual servings, like if you're going to use it for cooking, you know, like your dry, dry you know, uh, like for dry saute, you can just pull some out, warm it up, and then you've got a little bit of vegetable broth instead of opening up, because those cartons are not cheap, they're not cheap, okay? So this is a great way to recycle and reuse, okay? All right, so let's get into your wellness center because this is where your health is going to begin, is in the kitchen. And I wish I had a kitchen like that uh, it's to die for, but I'm happy with mine. So, um, but still, I saw that went, hmm, like to have that kitchen. But anyway, this is where your, your wellness is going to begin. Okay, so you've got to make sure you clean out the kitchen and then just fill it with healthy things. So right now I can go downstairs into my kitchen and I can eat anything that I want without feeling guilt. No guilt at all. And I love that. For me, that is so freeing because my most of my life I've been overweight, you know, sometimes morbidly obese, going, you know, up, down, you lose that weight, and then you stop doing whatever you're doing, then it comes back with a vengeance, and then it goes, you know, you go <laughs> my whole life has been yo-yos. So this is the only time that I've been ever able to keep off. I've lost over hundred pounds and I've kept it off. Okay. Healed my thyroid, reverse fatty liver syndrome, stopped migraines. Um, and I just feel so much better, you know, on so many different levels. I have more energy now than I did when I was half my age and my husband's reverse multiple sclerosis. So it's huge. This is huge. This is a huge lifestyle. So let's talk about some of these things. My absolute favorite is Swiss diamond pans, okay? And these are from Switzerland, hence the name Swiss. <laughs> but Europe has a very different, they have what's called the precautionary principle. You, before you can sell anything, whatever it is, you have to prove that it's not going to be hazardous to humans. And so I, I prefer to buy things like this from Europe, just saying. Um, here in the United States, we don't have that. You know, usually when somebody drops dead a couple of times, you know, it's like, oh, well, I guess maybe we should stop that and not use it anymore. So, but we don't have that. There's no, no regulation here in the United States. 
So I love these pans, absolutely adore them. And they're not cheap. You know, you can get them on Amazon, but I started buying one at a time, you know, every paycheck, every once in a while, and then I was replacing my pans. And I didn't need to, you know, I've had them now for about five years. They're still as good as the first day I got them. Okay, I mean, the, the surface doesn't diminish. So my girlfriend, we started this journey about the same time. She went in, these are from Denmark. They're called scan pans. She absolutely adores them, loves them. I have never used them, but I love her recommendation. She is, you know, she and I, we speak true. You know, so if she makes a recommendation, I take it as absolute truth. So I've not used these, but she recommends them highly. But this is what I don't recommend is these over here. These are extremely, these are ceramic pans and you can still get them at Bed Bath & Beyond for probably a short while before they go under. Um, but the, and I don't even remember the name. The name was like 27 miles long um, of what the, what the name of this pan was. And the, the thing I found when I first started cooking with them, I was like, oh, these are brilliant. I love these things. These are great. This is wonderful. And then you've got a ceramic, a very thin, micro thin layer of ceramic on top of aluminum that have two different expansion rates. What could possibly go wrong? So after six months, first of all, after a month or so, the finish started degrading and it wasn't as nonstick. And then by six months, it had this, the, it was chipping off in pieces. So it's cut ceramic over aluminum. So if those pieces as they flaked, flaked off, then you're exposing yourself to aluminum. Okay. Aluminum, not, you do not need aluminum in your body. You should not have it in your body on any way, shape, or form. You want to be making sure checking your deodorants. That's one of the you know, major places that deod that that aluminum gets into your body. Um, there is baking soda, which usually sometimes has aluminum in it. Aluminum foil, stop using aluminum foil. If you're going to use aluminum foil, use, use parchment paper first, and then put like, like I'll make lasagna and you need to cover it first. So I'll put parchment paper and then seal it in with aluminum foil. But I hardly ever, ever, ever use aluminum foil for any reason. So please stop using aluminum foil because it goes right into your food, then you eat the food. So I never recommend these anymore, ever, ever, ever these ceramic pans, they're cheap, they're inexpensive. And in the beginning, they're beautiful. The ceramic, the surface is like ice. It's like so beautiful. No, doesn't last. Okay, game changer, okay? Not one, two, you need two, okay? And I say that with all due respect because I use this on the weekends and I even bought extra liners because the liner comes out and it's great. So the liner, you know, I bought extra liners. So I'll have that one ready. And then when that one's done, I open it up, take that one out, put that one in, and then let that out and let it cool. So my husband and I batch cook usually on Sundays. We batch cook and prepare three, four dishes for the whole week. Cook once, eat many times. Yes, I like that. I like that. So we spend a couple of hours together and it's become our, our together time, you know, in the kitchen and cooking. You know, he never could, and he's around here someplace. I don't know where he is right now, but he's around here someplace. Anyway, he never learned to cook. Well, now he's starting to. And he makes, now he owns the baked bean recipe and he knows how to make baked beans and it's delicious. So now all I have to do is, honey, are we ready for baked beans? Yes. So we soak the beans the night before and he's on it the next day, okay? He's not gonna win any, <laughs> any prep line preparation cook, short order cook, he's not gonna be. He is slow, slower than molasses in January. So or I should say February now, but he's learning. He's learning how to cook and he's learning how to make food. So anyway, uh, this is a game changer, especially you can cook soup in it. You can saute, dry saute, start sauteing right there in the pot. Then you can cook rice, beans, grains. Um, it's a slow cooker. It's a fast cooker. It's um, make yogurt. Yogurt, learning how to make yogurt, ridiculously easy. I mean, ridiculously easy. You're like, really? That's all there is to it? Yes. It's like, so I use wet soy milk and probiotic. Done. 
put it in the Instant Pot, come back the next morning, you have yogurt. It's delicious. And it's a game changer because you can use it on so many different recipes and it becomes part of sauces and dips and, ah, oh, because that's the thing. That's what makes this lifestyle is the sauce. It's the secrets in the sauce, right? Okay. Uh, this is nice to have, not a must have. So this is an air fryer. Okay, my French fries never came out like that because that's, that's with oil and probably salt. I'll, let me show you what mine look like. So that's my French fries, all right? So those are cooked in an air fryer and that is a dip that is using my, my yogurt. It makes yogurt and some sriracha sauce, which is a vegetable sriracha made by True, True Made Foods and then a little bit of Dijon mustard. Oh, that is to die for <laughs> that. And I just take my French fries and dip it. I use them as a vehicle for that, <laughs> that sauce. <laughs> so it's delicious. Those are my French fries. And that's what's nice. That's about the only thing, you know, I use my air fryer for that and my banana oat balls. <laughs> those are those. That was a recipe that was born out of sheer desperation. And I think that's in your package. It's like, I needed a cookie. And I'm like, okay, look, I'm not going out because if I went to the grocery store, you would you know what I would have come back with, <laughs> you know, when you just had those cravings and you just like, I got to have that. So I'm like, okay, all right. I'm not going into the store because I'm inherently lazy. So. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, what do I got? All right, I got some really, really ripe bananas. Um, what else? So I, I took some bananas, mashed them up, added some ex coconut extract, vanilla extract, and then added some oatmeal, mixed it all together, and made little balls. And the first time I made it, a little bit dry, you know, on the inside, crispy and crunchy on the outside. So it was great. And then I said, well, let me try doing this. I took one of those big blackberries and wrapped the dough around it. <gasps> Oh, that took it to the next level <laughs> because the blackberries inside got really hot. And then as soon as you bit into them, they burst open. And the flavor of the blackberry just was like, whoa. And then I was doing a cooking class and I had a little bag of extra, those little mini chocolate chips, the vegan mini chocolate chips. So I put like a tablespoon of that in the, in the batter. And I'm like, okay, now we're talking. <laughs> now we're at Jedi level, right? So that's a great one, especially if you have grandkids coming over. It's easy to do and make. So again, the air fryer is a nice to have, nice to have, but not. And now a lot of ovens are coming with air fryers built in. So, you know, you don't have to have a separate one because they do take up a lot of counter space, but they now are, are selling them, you know, as part of ovens and other things. Oh, sorry. My bad, my bad. Okay. These are silicone mats. You can get them at Bed Bath & Beyond while they still last. And then Amazon's, but these silicone mats you just roll out on your cookie trays, nothing takes to them, nothing. So you can make cookies and roast sweet potatoes and all kinds of good stuff on these. Nothing will stick to them. So it just makes it so that you don't have to use oil. Okay. You've got to have a good blender. And I recommend the Vitamix. No, I don't have any stock in it. I don't work for Vitamix, but it's the best. Not to say that there's not other blenders out there. You would have to do your research. They are not cheap. I'm not, I, no question about it. They're not cheap. However, that is an 11 amp motor. I mean, the lights dim in the kitchen when I turn it on. Okay. And, but it can take shoe leather down to the cellular level, you know, like, bink. I mean, it's a very powerful motor, very powerful blades. And that's what you need, especially because you're going to be making a lot of sauces and soups and smoothies and all kinds of things that you're going to be using. I use this out of all the, the appliances that I have. I use this every day, if not multiple times a day, every day. Okay. So you've got to have a good blender. There's some other good ones out there. You know, this is this in the instant pot must haves, must haves. Okay. I love having a pot rack and it just makes it easy. I used to have it over my stove. But when I moved up here and got my house here, there was no space for it. So now it's over my refrigerator. But it's just nice to have the pans hanging there and not stacked. Or my mother used to have to stack them inside the oven. There was always like 15 pans nested within each other inside the oven. And then you had to take that out and put them up and then, you know, and then put them away and put them in. No, this is just so easy. And again, it's these little tips that just make it so much easier 
to, to, for this lifestyle. A Cuisinart is not a must have, but it's a really nice to have, um, especially when you're making things like, you know, muffins or you're shredding a lot of stuff, especially on the weekends, you know, so invest in a good, good Cuisinart. They make it so much easier. Okay. Um, this is a spice rack and it looks like it comes with that wood. It doesn't, it's just the rack. And actually these racks come individually. So I've got like one and a half of these, but four of them in my kitchen. My husband's gonna consider intervention at some point between the spices and the cookbooks. He's gonna consider interventions. So, but it's better like you had the lazy Susan, your spices are on that and you're trying to find it or they get shoved in a cupboard and you can't find it. Do I have this spice? Do I not have this spice? You're sitting there digging through, you gotta find a place and a way so that you can see these, okay? So without question, I can't say enough. Spices are gonna be your new best friend, okay? You gotta get a good knife set. Having dull knives will be the easiest way you get yourself hurt, okay? And it makes it really tough to chop vegetables. So having a good knife set and sharp, get a good knife sharpener to sharpen those knives and keep them sharp. That is without question. I, I this is the set I have was tough and I like them. They, they've been hand, they've, they've handled well. And they, 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 they survived me, right? This is a, an Ulu knife, which is fun. This is a fun to have, not necessary. Um, they usually have these big wooden bowls. And if you've ever been to a restaurant called Chopped, I wish we had one here on the Cape. And if anybody knows anybody out there who knows that you get a, 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 it's a chain store. It's basically, you know, a salad bar, a big salad bar. And they have these knives that they chop up your salad. So it's beautifully presented to you with the dressing. And oh, it's just the best. Anyway, these are fun. It's a fun thing to have, you know, to chop. I love my salad chopped, you know, into nice little tiny pieces that you're not having to sit there and, you know, use your fork and knife and cut up all the pieces of, of your salad. Okay. Um, so let's talk about a few other things. So your glass dishes are still great. You know, typically before this, you would have used some Crisco or some olive oil or something like that to line the pan so things didn't stick. Well, now you can just use parchment paper, okay? And it won't stick. Done. So you can still use your glass dishes and they work beautifully, okay? Um, popcorn. Popcorn is... When you cook it, obviously, with oil and butter, it's not going to be healthfully healthful for you. Tastes great. I'm not going to lie. Just saying. Tastes amazing. But the hot air popcorn, you're like, yeah, but it tastes like cardboard when you pop it in the air popper because there's nothing with it. Ah, I got you. So you take a spray bottle, and they have these spritzer bottles, and you get some infused balsamic vinegar. You spritz the popcorn as it's coming out. And then it gets it a little bit moist. And then you shake some of that nutritional yeast on that top. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Just saying. Okay. And there's two stores. I, I had not been to the one. They somebody told me about this in Chatham, that they have an uh, infused oil and balsamic vinegar store there in Chatham. But I do know that there is one in Falmouth on Main Street. It's called the Row Kitchens. And they have... The they used to, I don't know if they did now do because of COVID, but you could go in and taste them and try them. Oh, and as you taste them, you're like, my husband's like, oh my God, this is going to be a several hundred dollar trip, isn't this? And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying, because they were so good. And you can use those literally as dressings. They're that good. You know, that, that's all you need is that. And um, I use like, there's a sesame ginger. I use that for stir fry. It, they're delicious. Oh my God, these infused balsamic vinegars. Who knew? So anyway, popcorn, that makes a great treat. Now be careful because that popcorn is going to be high caloric density. You know, if you're, if you're at weight and you're not dealing with health issues, then that's a great snack. But if you're trying to lose weight, that comes in about 14, 1500 calories a pound. What? Yes, I know. That's a whole nother concept, caloric density. Okay, this is called a Queasy Pro, and you don't have to get this. This is a fun thing to have, and it makes it very convenient. When I make my yogurt, okay, um, 
after you make the yogurt and you put it in the refrigerator, it kind of separates a little bit. Some of the liquid comes out. And it still has a lot of liquid in it from the, from the soy milk. So I take a coffee filter. You remember the old coffee filters, Mr. Coffee, you know, I'll wet it and I'll line that in that container. And then I dump the yogurt, a jar, like 15, 16 ounces of yogurt, put that in there and then put the lid on it and put it in the refrigerator. What this does is it separates the solids from the liquids. And the liquid I'll throw into my smoothie, okay? Because that's good protein. And then I'll use, now you have Greek yogurt. And you can turn that into sour cream. You can turn that into cheese. You can turn that into a dip. You can turn that into like, and I give so many different ideas of what you could do with this. Now, you don't have to get this. Now, what I like about this is that it's flat and it sits flat in your refrigerator. You can take a funnel, you know, put a coffee filter in the funnel and put the yogurt in. You have to stand it up like in a quart sized jar, okay? And then put it in the refrigerator. The only thing I don't like, it works just fine. The only thing I don't like is that that it becomes too easy to tip over in the refrigerator. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> so yeah, don't do that. Um, so this makes it easy because it's flat and it doesn't tip. Especially when my husband's rooting around in the refrigerator and I've got this precariously balanced. <laughs> he starts rooting around and knocks it over. Ask me how I know. So anyway, this is a nice to have, not a must have, but a nice to have. If you make, I, I adore soups. I, I'll be eating soups almost all the way into like, like July, you know, and it's hot. I'll still be eating soups. I love soups. So, and I like creamy soups. So this makes it easy to take your, immer this is an immersion blender. You just take it right in the pot. And it, then you don't have to take it out of the pot, put it through, run the, through the blender, and then put it into another bowl. So this makes it, it's just nice. It's just really, really nice. And then that is like a whisk, you know? And do you guys know, pop quiz, anybody know what the liquid, or do you know what aquafaba is? Pop quiz, anybody know? Aqua? Yeah. Yes, it is the liquid that's left. Uh, in cans of certain beans, garbanzo or white beans. Correct. That's chickpeas. Chickpeas. That is what aquafaba is. I feel like we're hearing somebody. From... It's like, whoo. <laughs> so, sorry. No, that's fine. Just mute uh, yourself. But good answer. Sorry. You scored points. Okay. So aquafaba is this absolutely amazing liquid. Never, ever, ever throw the liquid from chickpeas out again. You can make that into whipped cream. There's so many things that you can do with aquafaba that you had no clue, okay? Absolutely amazing. So anyway, and, and instead of sitting there, you know, trying to whisk and put enough air into this to get it light and fluffy, you use that. And it's, it's so much easier to use. So that's good. So, all right. Um, this, if you ever bought a mandolin slicer, they're big, they're bulky. You never take them out of the cupboard because, you know, it's like by the time you get it out, you could have sliced that, whatever it was that you were slicing. So I love this. This is a handheld mandolin slicer that it's flat and it just flits, sits right into the drawer. I take it out, especially when you're, you're cutting onions. It just makes it so easy, so easy. Or I'm cutting um, potatoes to make French fries or not French fries, um, potato chips, but you know, Again, just makes it easier to cut, to slice. Um, this is a zester up on top, but that is, in my opinion, it's too fine to really do a good job zesting. Only if you're doing things like, like you've gotten some fresh nutmeg and you're actually grinding it yourself. Okay, that would work for that. Apart from that, eh, you're going to be sitting there for 12 days trying to zest something. So I use actually this right here. That's your old cheese grater, okay? Perfect. And I had several different sizes of those handheld ones, you know, like the citrus, like if you're doing it for lemon, that's too small for a lemon. Okay. Even still, I got to have a bigger grater for that. That worked great for like limes. Oh, limes. You take the zest from the lime. First of all, the zest from lemons and limes, you're adding a tremendous amount of nutritional value, especially if you're dealing with cancer. Like, and it adds so much flavor. It's crazy how much flavor it adds. 
It's just, you're like, how would we not know this, you know, like back in the day, just adds so much flavor. So that's really a good thing to have. Okay. Um, I love these uh, little baking, um, you know, muffin liners. So, you, you know, use your old muffin tins and you put that into it. And so, especially when I'm going to places like a potluck and I do the, um, I'm, oh, I make this chocolate peanut butter pie. It is to die for. I didn't even get it. The last potluck we had, somebody brought it. I, I didn't even get any. It was gone. Wait, there was crumbs left. <laughs> there was just crumbs. So, but they had actually brought it in the pie. So what I do is I actually, and they have the large baking cups and they have the mini baking cups. And some people just like a little, little bit of a taste, you know, for dessert. And some people are like, mm, yeah, no, give me the big one. <laughs> you know, because like, especially this chocolate peanut butter pie. Yeah, it's so delicious. I'm not kidding. It's like one of the best recipes ever. Anyway, um, or you could put it into something like that silicone baking thing. You can put them in there. But those silicone things are floppy. So they need to have their own tray underneath. But what's great about that is that you can take and like you cook some beans and you put some in to each container and you freeze it. Then you pop them out, put it into a plastic bag. Now you've got a portion of beans. So we'll take that out and let them defrost. And then we put them on our salads. Right. So it's a great way to have portions or this is what I was talking about with the um, vegetable broth, you know, putting some into that, freezing it, pop them out and then put it into a Ziploc bag. Now you've got individual servings of vegetable broth. Then you don't have to open up a big can of the vegetable broth and you've got it. Boom. Right. So saving your vegetable scraps. Great, great tip. Great tip. OK, I know this kind of sounds silly. I just love this apple slicer. And it's something simple and basic, but I love how the apple just opens up like a flower, you know? And I sit there and I put it on a plate and I feel special. I don't know why, but I just feel like the present, we eat with our eyes too. And I just love the visual, the presentation of it. Or, oh my gosh, is there anything better on this planet than a ripe, like a Bartlett pear? And you slice that open and it just, it literally just folds right open. Like, eat me. Like, yes, I am. <laughs> and, and you sit there and it just melts in your mouth. But it's just, it's such a beautiful presentation. And, and what I've done for like guests, and I have several of these. So like I have, um, I'll, I'll slice it, then it opens up and then I'll put berries around it. And just, it's such a simple dessert. And everybody just goes, wow, that it's, be it's very beautiful because berries are my new crack, <laughs> right? Berries are my new crack. So I'll put sprinkle a few raspberries and blackberries in there. Ah, oh, beautiful presentation. It's simple, but, oh, and here's a tip. This is a great trick, especially if you have to go to work. So what I do is I slice it, take a rubber band, put it back together, put a rubber band around it, and then put it in a Ziploc bag. And then that way, when I'm ready to eat it, I just open it up and it's already cut. I don't have to bring the slicer with me in my cooler to work. I've done that too, but once I learned to do that, I'm like, oh, hey, this is not a bad idea. Okay, on the road, because we travel, and for me, I have a very difficult time eating out. And by the way, we're starting a restaurant campaign, right? Um, and if you've seen the flyer for the plant-based Cape Cod, that's, we're, join the Facebook group, Plant-Based Cape Cod, and we're starting a restaurant campaign. So Anka, share what you've gotten so far. So. So um, I started, I went to Baby Paper on the weekend with my baby Bastard with the youngest children. And I had all the vegan burrito and it was delicious. And it came in a little bowl of melon and fruit and berries on the and a little bowl of guacamole. And um it was vegan, but I think there was a little oil in the pesto that was in it. Um, so I started to try the oil drink. So uh, I'm also going to go to Spoon and See. They have an American bowl with a pesto. So just looking for the restaurant owners. Uh, it says conditions. So thank you. So those of you who didn't hear, Anka is, uh, we're starting this restaurant campaign. Anka has already gone to the Daily Paper. And what's the other one? Seed, Spoon and Seed. 
So we're trying to get those restaurants right now. But we've got a whole list of things. And so if anybody's interested and wants to help us to join in on this restaurant campaign, because they have to know that we're out here and, and we want to have places that we can go to eat. And so once we get somebody, and once they join and do this, then they get a certificate that they can put in their restaurant that they can show that, that they have a plant-based option. Then they get on a map with uh, plant peer pods that has an interactive map across the world, the world, okay? They've got pods all over the world. And so, you know, it's gonna be on an interactive map so you can see where the restaurants are any place you travel. So, but apart from that, um, and it's kind of difficult. We go like, for example, on a trip, bless you, to Cleveland, we go to the National Health Association. We're going in June, and that is a conference I will never miss. It's, to me, one of the best ever, okay? So what we're going to do, my husband, we'll prepare food ahead of time because there's no place on the road I can eat. I mean, there is none. You go to these stop places, we get gas, and you go in, and there's chips and crap everywhere. And, you know, you might find a little package of nuts, you know, that's about it. Maybe some progressive ones might have some fruit, you know, a banana on the counter or an apple. That's it. Okay. So we plan ahead. Okay. And you hear me say this a lot in class because in the Plant Pure, Plant Pure Academy, we have weekly support classes. We have a, our own group that we meet and the education will blow you away. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Anyway. Um, Oh, trip to Cleveland. So anyway, anyway, um, oh, failure. Well, this is what I was going to say. In the class, you will hear me say it almost every class. Failure to plan is a plan for failure. So if I don't plan ahead my food for the road, I, either I'm not going to eat or I'm going to be eating stuff that's not going to be good for my health. Okay, so I plan ahead. So this is, oh, let me back up for a second. So this is what's called a mini hot logic. And so this is, it looks like a little lunchbox and it fits this perfectly, the six cup Pyrex dish perfectly inside of it, okay? Then they have this little converter that will convert your regular electricity to the car electricity. And so while we're driving, I've got this plugged in. And so when we stop, we can have a hot meal, okay? So that is brilliant. So that's the small one, but they also have a large one, okay? And so this large, oops, my bad. I don't know how we got there. Okay, wow, we really went back. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We're going to get there. There we are. Wow. Okay. Sorry. Um, so this is the, they have a nine by 13 and I have not one, but two of these. Okay. Why? I'm so glad you asked. When we go to Thanksgiving to, you know, we get together with my family. I'm the only one on both sides of my family that has gone plant-based and all of them are morbidly obese. All of them. They have not, they see this and they're like, yeah, whatever, you know, and that's it. And they keep going on. So in the beginning, I tried to tell them and they're like, we don't want to hear it. Stop. No one wants to hear this. Because I'm the baby, the family, whatever. It's not, they're not going to listen to me. Anyway, so I, in the beginning, I tried to cook, you know, when I got there and do like Thanksgiving and they're trying to do the turkey and all this other thing. I'm like, okay, whatever. So now I cook, put it into the glass dishes. As soon as I get to their house, I've got four dishes now already in the in mini hot logic because I have two of these. It can fit full, two side by side. I plug them in out of everybody's way. And when we sit down for dinner, I just open up my thing and I've got my food. And people are like, can I have some of that? Yes. Anyway, um, but I usually bring a salad. Everybody likes salad. You just have separate dressings on the table so you can put your own. And then I also bring my chocolate peanut butter pie and they all have recognized that and they all accept that now. So, cause I always get the grand inquisition. What's that? What's in it? Yeah, you know, it's food. Stop it. No one else gets this grand inquisition. No one else. 
and they and we have this competition to see who can bring the highest caloric density, worst possible food for you, cream cheese with salami in the center wrapped with bacon. Okay. I always carry canteens and I just so happen to have one right here. Um, these are clean canteens and I like these a lot. Um, and it's great because this is double walled stainless steel insulated, okay? And the lid inside is also stainless steel, okay? So the only thing touching my food or drink is stainless steel. So I really love this. They have different sizes, different shapes. This is one of the older models. This is one of the newer ones. The only thing I would say is don't get the ones with color because you can't put them in the dishwasher because it starts to flake off. This is one of my nicer ones because like I keep them forever. They're, they last forever. And, you know, like I've got the ones that go to the beach, you know, that are banged up, dinged, stand scraped, whatever. So, but I always carry my food and drink with me, always. But especially drink. Um, it's a whole nother conversation. I do a whole nother lecture on this, but water. I've been studying water. I'm a chemistry teacher. And I've been studying water for over 25 years. And so like at my house, our water has become so toxic and so polluted. It's very difficult, even going through a recycling center, you know, the water town water center that it, that it takes care of it. Anything that goes down your drain, it goes down and then they have to, they, they basically go through a process of filtration, but most of the chemicals that are in that, in the water are so tiny that they, they go right through. And then they throw and dump chlorine onto it. And then they bubble it, to try and get the chlorine out. And now federally regulated, Federally, federal regulations say that you're supposed to have the water come out to be seven, a pH of seven that comes out of your tap. Yeah, not really, but whatever. Um, but at this point, the water is so acidic that they usually use like something like sodium hydroxide to raise the pH up. Last time I checked, that was like the main ingredient in Drano. So that's what they're adding back in to raise the pH up. And actually, if you think about this, that's even better than bottled water. Just saying, it's a whole other conversation. Anyway, so at my house, I have a four-stage filtration system based upon the water, the town water. I live in Brewster, their town water. Then it goes up through what's called an ionization machine, okay? This ionization machine, I can change the pH of my water with one touch of a button. And I change it for different purposes, depending upon what I need. Uh, anyway, so I carry it. And I always carry my water. With me when we're on trips, I'll bring several gallons of it. And when I run out, then I'll use, you know, whatever. But I usually try and bring some with me as well. So a cooler is def definitely something that you want to have um, without question. And I like this cooler because it's got like a little pocket on top that you can put something hot in there. And then you have a separate area down below for um, cold things. My one criteria is I say it has to be tall enough to fit in my my canteens. So that's one thing that I always make sure that they're tall enough that way. I also like look for the plastic liner that it can come out so you can wash it because it gets grody. You know, you throw stuff in after you've eaten it, then when the food falls out, then you, try, you know, it makes it difficult to try and wash it. So I always get one with a liner. And then I like the little pocket on the front. There's that little pocket on the front, napkins and silverware. And then I like on the side to have the pockets also for the canteens to keep them handy. Okay. So you definitely want to have you know, something to carry your food. Carrying your food is must because when you get hungry, all bets are off. You will talk yourself into anything. Let me give you an example. I'm not proud because I'll be the first to go, hi, I'm Gene Schumacher. I'm a food addict. Okay. I was tutoring after school. This is a May Day call, and I didn't know I was going to be. I got this like at 12. Can you call? He's got a test. He needs help. I'm like, okay. It was three hours later, and that didn't help because he was hopeless. He was not going to pass that test, but whatever. I gave it a shot. I'm driving home, and I'm starving now because I'm smelling them cooking. You know, it's like dinner time, and my stomach is going, you know, and the inner raccoon is coming out going, I need something now. I want it now, 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 now. And my inner raccoon came out, and I saw this. Big, I was in a part of town that I didn't know, 
and I saw this bagel place. I'm like, okay, I was going to go get a toasted multigrain bagel with nothing on it. That was my intent. When I used to be a cream cheeseaholic, I could eat a stick of cream cheese. No problem. No problem. I got inside and I said, toasted multigrain bagel. He goes, oh, do you want cream cheese? We have a new one. It's got walnuts and raisins and cinnamon and, and all these. And like, oh, yes. I couldn't stop. I, there was no filter. I couldn't stop. I couldn't. And he slathered it on so thick, like half an inch thick of cream cheese. And I got outside and I ate it like I had been just released from jail. You know, ah. 10 minutes down the road, I had to pull off. I was in such pain. And I mean pain to the point I was considering going back because I knew where the hospital was back in that other town, going in and having my stomach pumped. That's how much pain. I couldn't sit up and drive. I was laying on the front seat going, just let me die here. I was so, in such pain. I kid you not. Finally, after about 20 minutes of laying there on the front seat and sweating like some kind of farm animal, I mean, I sat up and got, was able to drive home and crawled up the stairs into my bed and sat, laid there in this fetal position, just in such pain. I'm not kidding you. My husband comes home and I'm just like, oh, mooing on the bed. And he's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I had cream cheese. Well, have I had cream cheese since then? No, I have not. I look at that and go, ah, ah, no, no. The spawn of the devil. No. I will not touch it. Even the plant-based cream cheese. I'm like, mm, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. But once your gut biome starts to change, your body's going to let you know that that is not acceptable anymore. And it will let you know in uncertain terms. That pain is real. <laughs> it's real. Anyway, but you will convince yourself. And once you eat and go and go off roading to some place, McDonald's or, you know, oh my God, I got to have French fries. You're going to feel it and it's not going to feel good. And you're going to go, mm -mm. this is an app. And this is good for, especially when people are first starting uh, to go plant-based, you know, and we do this, I do this in the Academy and I make this recommendation for people who are just beginning this, especially if you're new to the plant-based lifestyle, is that I want you to take a picture of your food before you eat it, everything you eat. Okay, so we can help fine tune and tweak it. No one's going to sit there and go bad doggy, bad doggy. You ate that. No, um, the whole objective is to see when did you eat that and why, you know, like if you, if you went off off plan, why did you eat that? You know, was there were you hungry? Was it something that was tempting you? Was it why? What, what happened? What, let's talk about the circumstance. So this is an app called See How You Eat, and it's the S H Y E. It's an app on on uh, the App Store. You know, and it's free, but they want you to get the paid version. <laughs> the only difference between the free version and the paid is that it will only keep. At the end of the day, it puts together this beautiful visual montage. It will record the time that you put that picture in, so you can put it in for like breakfast, you know, mid morning snack, lunch, mid afternoon snack, dinner, after dinner snack, okay, after after dinner snack. Um, you know, and then you, and it records the time. So you can see when you're eating, you know, it gives you a lot of information. So it creates a montage, a visual montage like this that you see. So that what you do then after the end of the day, is you take a screenshot of that, then you have it. So the only difference between the free version and the paid is the paid one once will give will store your pictures forever. The if it's a free version, they'll only keep like a couple of days you know, of your screenshots. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to dive just a little bit into label reading today. And so not as in depth, March 3rd is you're going to, we're going to really dive in deep. Okay. So the first thing is to, when you're learning to read labels is look at the ingredients. If there's anything on there that you don't know what it is, put it back. Don't eat it. Put it back. Okay. So you're looking for labels with things that have stuff you recognize, okay? Then we look at the serving size. My perfect favorite is, and we're gonna talk about this down the road because it's a lot of it is smoke and mirrors. 
is, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you want to look at the serving size. I don't want to give all my secrets away yet. Serving size, look and see. Is it reasonable? Is it a realistic serving size? Because most of them, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm going to eat three fourths of those, you know, three or four of those serving sizes. Then we look at the fat content, and this is one of the biggest misnomers. Now, we've had a, a change in the nutrition label uh, in the last couple of years. Some of the labels are still the old label, and they haven't converted yet. They were supposed to have, but I don't know when, but whatever. But some of them have, some of them haven't. In the new label, we gained, we scored a victory. In the previous labels, the salt, I mean, the sugar industry kept off having to put in a daily percentage value of sugar, and now they do. And that has hurt them <laughs> a lot um, because people are now aware of how much, because before it just listed in milligrams of sugar and you're like, you had no clue what, how much that was or how much you're supposed to have, whatever. Now they have a daily nutritional value for that on sugar. Um, anyway, but fat, we lost uh, a, a win on that. Uh, they used to label the calories from fat and they took that off. So now we have to do a couple other, a few extra steps to convert so that we can actually figure out because on the label, it is not giving you the amount of fat. They say it's based upon a 2000 calorie diet. I have not seen the numbers work in any way, shape or form. I really think they're making it up personally myself, but we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to be able to calculate the fat, the actual fat that you're consuming, not what they want you to think you're consuming. And then we're going to look at sodium, of course. All right. But I also want you to know there's 57 different names of sugar. Okay. So what they do is to keep the keep, because it goes in order of how much is in there. So the most is always going to be first down to the last, which will be the least. So in order to keep like sugar from being like the first three ingredients, what they do is they break it apart and use different sugars. So you see sugar way down on the list as written as sugar. And then you might see other types. There's 57 other different types of sugar. So they'll list that and you won't think of it as being sugar. So they're tricky. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors. So let's practice this. So this was like a granola. Okay. And I'm just going to say right off the bat, I recognized all the ingredients. So we passed step one. Okay, now in this container, let's look at the serving size. It's a half a cup. This is a granola. I'm not eating half a cup. I'm eating that bag. I, I'm just gonna be real. I'm gonna eat that bag. That's four servings, okay? They say there's four servings in that bag. I'm gonna eat the bag, I'm saying, okay? Now they say, now this is an old label because you see right here, um, right up here at the top, it says 130 calories from fat. And over here is the total calories. Okay. So what they've done is they've taken this away. All right. So we're going to have to learn how to calculate that, but not on this slide. <laughs> but so to calculate the actual amount of fat, you take the total fat calories, which is 130. And you're going to divide it by the total calories, multiply it by 100 to give you a, a percentage. That's actually 52% fat not 22 that they say, okay? That's 52% fat. You want to be consuming 20% or less. If you're an athlete, you want between 10 and 15% going more towards 10, okay? For your body and what you're eating. So the next thing we wanna look at is sodium. We want a one-to-one -one ratio between calories and milligrams of sodium. So if you look at calories, it's 250. So you want to look and see there should be 250 milligrams of sodium or less. Obviously, the less is going to be better. So in terms of salt, that's a score. That's a win right there. That is a great ratio for salt. Then we look at sugars down here, 26 grams. Now notice there's no daily nutritional requirement. That's the old label, okay? So 26 grams, eh, that is for a woman, according to the American... Heart Association, 25 grams for the day. A man is 37 and a half a day. So in one serving, one serving, you've already maxed out your sugar for the day. Okay, one serving. I'm eating that bag. That's four four servings. Okay, so. They do. That's a win too. 
yeah, the sugar industry definitely was not a happy this time, this time around. So this is my actual absolute personal favorite. They can say and market something that is 100% fat as fat free. That's what I said. Wait, excuse me. Wait just a minute. Wait, stop it. Stop it. How do they do that? I'm so glad you asked. You guys are great. <laughs> Look at the serving size. I don't know if you can read it from that far away. It's one fourth of a second. One fourth of a second. I don't know about you, but back in the day when I was using this, okay, I'd be like, Shh. right? My son, oh my God, if you got a hold of the can, half a can later, at least, you know, in the pan, right? So extra virgin olive oil is 4,000 calories a pound. I just want you to know that, okay? Just want you to know that. So that's how they can get away with marketing this is because they made the serving size. Is that even humanly possible? I'm sorry, one fourth of a second. I'm sorry, is that even humanly possible? And what is that going to get you? What is that even going to get you in the pan? It's not going to help you like be nonstick. Stop it. Okay. This is my all time favorite in terms of smoke and mirrors, in terms of nutrition labels. Now, this is part of the new label, and I know you can't read it, it's very small, but this is Miyoko cheese. Miyoko is absolutely, if you've never tried the Miyoko cheese, it's ridiculously good. And there's a reason why it's ridiculously good, because the first ingredient is coconut oil. And one of the things you definitely want to stay away from is coconut oil. And the reason being is coconut oil is 100, well, not 100, but very, very high in saturated fat. That's going to be the fat that's going to clog your arteries. You know how bacon, remember back in the day when you cooked bacon and, and it had all that grease and you took the bacon out and you let the bacon, you know, absorb, and then you let the bacon pan cool down so that you could take a paper towel, just wipe it out because it would harden, right? That's saturated fat. If it at room temperature, saturated fat will be a solid. So coconut, same thing. Okay. Coconut and coconut oil, They're very high in saturated fats. Okay. So that's going to be artery clogging stuff. So we want to stay away from that. So um, anyway, back to this Pioco cheese. All right. So now here's the, here's how we have to calculate because this is a new label. Okay. So we have to look at the total fat. Okay. And that's right up here. And I know it's really small print. It's 11 grams. So we have to convert that now to fat calories. Now the conversion, or in terms of dimensional analysis, if you take my chemistry class, it's a conversion factor that what you do is you take it and convert from um, grams to fat calories. So to do that, there's nine, nine calories per gram. So to, you multiply that number basically by, by nine. That's pretty much it. So that would give me 99 fat calories. Now, I don't know if you can read this. That's the total calories. It's 90. So how can I have more fat calories than total calories? This is my personal favorite. Do you understand this? I mean, how can you, you can't have more than 100%. So they're saying that the fat is 110% of the product. It's just... What? Who's doing this? Who? I just love this. So we look at the ingredients. First ingredient is coconut oil. Second ingredient is, um, let's see. Second ingredient is filtered water. So that's good. Third ingredient is organic sunflower oil. And then we have high, cashews. And then we have organic sunflower, lecithin, sea salt, and then cultures. But <laughs> that's my personal favorite. And the serving size is one tablespoon. Stop it. I'm eating half of that, if not the whole thing. I'm Stop it. One tablespoon? Stop, please. Yeah, no, that's not going to be it. Anyway, just wanted to share that. That to me is just mind-blowing. 
Okay. So learning how to read labels is really important. It is, and you start to, and here's the thing, in the beginning, it's a learning curve. Learning to read the labels, learning to find the foods that are okay, it's a learning curve. But once, like I'm on autopilot at this point, so I know what I can have, what's good, what's healthy, what's a good choice, what's not a good choice, like Miyoko's cheese. It's plant-based, but it's not a good healthy choice. It's not a good healthy choice, okay? All right, so how, how, do, I, how do I get my family? My husband's not going to do this. How do I get him to do this? Okay, you make a brilliant dinner that is plant-based. And if you need some suggestions, message me. I got you. And you make this brilliant dinner, and then you sit down with whoever and the whole family, and you watch a movie. Forks over knives, eating you alive. Play Pure Nation. If you've not seen Play Pure Nation, the second movie is coming out. That's the from from food to freedom that we're going to be hosting here. But the first movie in that series was called Plant Pure Nation. And at the end of that movie, they had a grassroots movement to try and create local pods because we're going to if it if change is going to have to happen, it's going to be through us. It's not going to come from the top down. It's not going to come from the government. Yeah, it's not going to come from food industry. They're there to make money. They're not there for our help. Just saying. So if we want to make this change, we're going to have to do it ourselves. So at the end of Plant Pure Nation, they said, okay, we're going to have these, these create these local pods. And so we are now officially plant-based Cape Cod, right? And we're growing, growing. Um, I'm doing these lectures and letting people know about this. So we have our own potlucks. We have gatherings. So the next one, Uncle, when's the next one? February? February 24th, we're meeting at um, Bread and Roses for dinner. They're going to be closed, but they're opening for just for our group. And they're going to make a special meal for us. So if you're interested in joining us, it's free. I mean, you just pay for your dinner, obviously, you know. But anytime like we do potluck and we just bring something, we're just doing this more to be, to have a social network so that, it was so wonderful to be able to eat the other night. And, and I think your girlfriend nailed it. She's like, I don't have to ask what's in that. Is that going to hurt me? Is that going to be right? Right. I mean, right. Wasn't it a good time? Yeah. And so we're starting, we're really starting to work together and to start this restaurant campaign, to get the movie here and just provide fellowship. So you don't feel like you're the out. The, the weird person out there, you know, you're the, you're with other people who are like on this mission and on this journey with you together. And you're seeing people change, change their health and feel better. Oh my gosh. Isn't it, isn't it great? I mean, right. When you eat this way, how good you feel and, and not on medications. It's crazy. It's absolutely phenomenal. To, to be able to do that. And I look at my friends, my girlfriend, who's three days older than I am. We've been together since elementary school. After her first stroke, when she was 50, I went and took the, the pots, I bought some pans, I bought food, I bought the movie Forks Over Knives, or not, it hadn't come out yet, whatever, whatever. I, anyway, I took it over to her. I taught her, I spent the weekend teaching her how to cook. She had type 2 diabetes. She went fine for about six months. And then a hot dog spiraled her out of control. And she couldn't get back on. She's had since then about four more strokes. Gout, her type 2, type two diabetes, she keeps having to ratchet up how much medication she's on. And so they just keep adding more and more and more. Anyway, you can change your health. No matter where you are at this stage of your life, you can still change your health destiny. Because me, I want to be out kayaking and hiking and biking here on Cape Cod. I made it. I'm here full time. Thank you. I did it. I got here. And I'm so happy to be here. And I want to be just be able to go out and not have to worry. Oh, I can't walk today. Oh, I threw my back out. Or, you know, I, I want to be out on the ponds kayaking and, and biking and on the beaches. That's my, my dream. If you want your husband or male partner, Come on board. You have to show them Game Changers. And that's two of these movies we're going to be showing here 
is Forks Over Knives. I swear, I, I kid you not, I've seen that movie at least 50 times. And every time I watch it, I get something else. It's very information dense. We're going to watch it, pause, have a discussion about it, watch it, pause, discuss what we just unpack, what we just learned, and go through it. Okay, we're going to do that with this movie, Forks Over Knives, and then Game Changers. That's the movie. If you want your husbands on board with this or any male out there, and I'm going to, okay, spoiler alert, okay, I'm going to tell you one scene in the movie is this urologist who took three college age athletes, the peak of their career, peak of their age, peak of their sexual prowess, okay, they strapped onto them this machine that connects to their penis. And over the night, it measures how many erections you have, how big, how long, the duration, all of this information. So the first night, there was three guys. One was already plant-based. The other two were not. So the first night, they each got a burrito for dinner. One was, you know, the vegan got the vegan. The other two got whatever, animal stuff. Then the next night, just one night, one night, they all got plant-based burritos. One night. The difference, now the vegan to the vegan that night, there was no difference for him. The animal got guys that were eating the animal products to no animal products. It was ridiculous. Okay. The change. Oh my gosh. And so the, my favorite comment was the urologist at the end of this, this scene was, so where are you going to take your Valentine for Valentine's Day? You're going to go to the steakhouse or you're going to go to the vegan place? And so the comment, one of the comments was at the end of the movie or in, in that, that this was just anecdotal information. Okay. This was not a study, blind placebo, whatever, blue ribbon. So Dr. Robert Otzfeld partnered up with Dan Purgis, who did the movie Freedom, Hope, no, Disease Reversal, Hope. And Dan's got deep pockets. So he funded this study through Dr. Robert Otzfeld. And they're doing this study that this urologist did with all the medical students at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York City. So I'm waiting for those results. I can't wait for them to come out. They're going to be published in a journal, but it's real. It's real. So if you want to get any man on board, game changers, game changers. Okay, Simply Salsa. Um, again, wow, ridiculously easy to make and add so much flavor. Put this on top of beans and rice or potatoes or uh, on and on. Delicious. Not easy, boom, okay? And again, having this in the fridge, you can pull that out, you can put it on a, a number of things, okay? Delicious, absolutely delicious. Okay, so you gotta get past the point where you're gonna have to deal with food, okay? That's the bottom line. You're gonna have to learn how to cook. If you don't cook, you're gonna have to get in the kitchen, you're gonna have to get your hands dirty, get over it, okay? Just get in the kitchen. And make it a date night, you know, and cook food together. And, you know, it just makes it fun to be in the kitchen together. It's kind of intimate, you know, getting together. Help, I can't cook. Okay, I hear you. There's a great series, and I know you can't see it. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on that. That is with jeffnovic.com. Uh, 
and he's got a, a DVD series called Fast Food. And it's not like, like McDonald's fast food. It's like, how do I make dinner and have it on the table in 10 minutes or less? Okay. So great and super easy to cook. He teaches you how to shop. He teaches you fast food, how to make the basics, and then like burgers and fries. And he teaches you a bunch of different ways to do that. So really good uh, resource right there. Um, there's a lot of cooking videos on my website, simplyplantbase.net. Let me just show you. Um, this is my website, but there is, this thing is in the way. Here's recipes. And if you look at recipes here, and this is all free. First of all, this is a cookbook by a very good dear friend of mine. Her name is Kathy Kate Rossini, and I've done, and I wish I, she still did this, but once COVID hit, she's like, yeah, I'm done. Uh, we had classes in her home and oh, her food is just, a, it's gourmet. This is gourmet. Okay. And her food is just absolutely incredible. She's got a cookbook, um, cookbook author, love the foods that love you back, clean, healthy, vegan recipes. They're, I'm not going to lie. They're a little bit more work than the average uh, plant-based cookbook, but wow, it's worth it. So worth it. Okay, so that's one. And she's got, those are the recipes um, there. And then um, these are all cooking videos here. So, you know, you can click on just like you saw, like breakfast apple rice, or my favorite is, this is my recipe right here, potato waffles. Oh, I could eat those any, any night. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it's great. Wow. Okay, anyway, so um those are all cooking recipes and if you go to the youtube channel after you're done you know because it's a youtube video if you go to the channel and see look for the you know about about or the description then i have the the recipe is down there so you can just copy and paste it and put it into a, a document for yourself so all right um and then there's programs if you you know if you're new to this lifestyle and just beginning there's the plant-based academy and it's for people that are beginning or that need help, you know, that like you've been plant-based for a couple of years and you need support, you need help, you need guidance, you still want to learn. Oh my gosh, there is so much to learn. I mean, seriously, because you're changing what you have thought was right for the last 50 years or 60 years or 70 years. Okay. You, you've got a lot to learn. All right. You're going to have, you're going to have questions. And if you come up with a question that I can't answer, I got a speed dial. I've got about 25 different people who can answer it. Okay. I will find the answer. If I don't know it, I will find the answer for you. But you're going to have a lot of questions. And so because of those questions over the year, I've been doing this now for like, I opened up the Plant-Based Academy last, last summer, but I've been doing this for a long time. Because I realized there was other people out there and we were doing 10 day challenges and all this other stuff. And people would ask me questions like, oh my God, what about oxalates? Is that going to hurt me? Is that going to harm me? So I'd go out and research it. I'd put it all together and you've got it at your fingertips. So that's what at Plant Based Academy, the Pregnancy Advantage is a program for women who want to get their bodies pregnant ready. If you're going to have children or you want grandchildren and your daughter's having problems conceiving. Okay. Because a lot. This is why, and I work with Deborah Shapiro. She's an OBGYN. She and I, I saw it in the classroom. I saw children having health issues because of the food. I saw it directly in the classroom and impacting it. And think about this. I did a TED talk on this. I was born in 1960. Okay, not quite up there with the dinosaurs or anything. Okay, but a while ago, I knew every kid in our neighborhood. I knew every kid that went to our school. Not one case of autism, not one, okay? It wasn't until the 1990s that I saw my first case of autism in a classroom setting. Now, according to the CDC, it's one out of 47. And it wasn't but a year ago that it was one out of 58. How come in my lifetime this is happening? Well, I have several theories. No blind, double blind placebo tests or challenges or whatever, but anyway. Okay, so that's what the program is about because a lot of women are having trouble conceiving. They've got PCOS or endometriosis or all these other health issues that's stopping them. They're using personal care products that are massive endocrine disruptors. I've been studying personal care products for over 25 years and the chemicals that, that cause a lot of problems. 
especially for women, especially on, on the reproductive system, somewhere, shape, or form. Like, for example, parabens. Do you guys know about parabens? Okay. Do you know what they do? It's a chemical family. Like, there's methylparaben, there's butylparaben, propylparaben. It doesn't matter. The ending says parabens. That means it's going to be toxic to you. Some are worse than others, but they're all bad. Okay. So for a woman, it's going to have an impact on your reproductive cycle. It could cause you not to ovulate. It could cause you not to have your periods or your periods become too heavy. It could cause uterine cancer. But most commonly, it's expressed as breast cancer. And one of the things they do not tell you, because as soon as you get diagnosed with breast cancer, you immediately put on like tamoxifen and put on the medical treadmill. Okay. And parabens, if you're still using products, which are in everything, you're still using personal care products with parabens in them. It's going to cause the tamoxifen to not work. It becomes useless. And they do not tell you that. So that makes me absolutely crazy. Just makes me crazy. They know it. Anyway, so back to this dealing with food. All right, there's two apps that are out there, and I'm sure there's by more now, but one is called Forks Over Knives, and the other one is Dr. McDougall. I think they're like $4.99, you know, and they're not going to break the bank or anything. But these apps have recipes. They have, they make shopping lists for you, you know, and you can say, I need this and this and this and get rid of the other stuff in that. And you, like, you already have like cinnamon or whatever at the house. So it already tells you. And Dr. McDougall is the same way. Okay. He's got, and you can type in like, you know, I need a recipe that has eggplant in it. And it'll show you six recipes with eggplant, you know, something that you can use. So that's a great, great app. Okay. Um, but the best thing is to batch cook. So this is what my husband and I will do like on, on a weekend. So invariably in my fridge at all given times, I have some kind of grain. And it's, uh, potatoes. Potatoes are amazing. And especially like I love those. My favorite is the Yukon Golds. Just love them. Um, but I cook them in the Instant Pot. So I've always got a big batch cooked and ready to roll. I put them out, put them into the refrigerator. Now, in the process of heating and cooking it, and then cooling it down, the grain, the right, the starch branches change, and it now becomes what's called resistant starch. So that let's say that and I'm making this up, 100 calorie potato. Let's just say it's 100 calories. That calorie, that 100 calorie potato is now 50 calories, but you're still eating that whole potato. So it's like learning, learning these little tips and tricks. Okay, I usually bake sweet potatoes, and I have them in my fridge. Okay, um, I make some kind of salad. Uh, that's my husband's Mexican lasagna. I think we're on like week 94 right now. My husband's back there going, yeah, um, because he, I'm like, honey, what do you want for, for lunch this week? Mexican lasagna. I, I can't make other things. No, that's good. Next question, right? So these are my new crack right here is berries. Oh my gosh, I love them. Uh, this is some kind of curry, something like that. Again, salads. I usually have these the peppers for a dip. I'll usually bring hummus and peppers and then some kind of beans. You know, that's what's almost always in my refrigerator all the time. OK, so that's batch cooking. That's that's a week right there of food that I can make a lot of different things. So. I tell people as soon as they start in my program to go through my recipes and pick out five or six. Hi, what just happened? All right, I'm backing away. Anyway, uh, learn five or six things that you can't live without, okay? Anka just brought these spring rolls. Oh my gosh, that is at the last potluck that we had. Oh, I went home and said, I gotta make those. So that's one of my new five or six dishes that are gonna be my husband's back there going, yeah, we like those too. And they were absolutely delicious. Because back in the day, think about this, when you were eating regular, it was meatloaf Monday, taco Tuesday. You know, you just ate the same things all the time. So what you're doing now is you're looking for those five or six recipes that are like, I could eat this every day, like Mexican lasagna, every day. My husband eats it every day. I like a little more variety, but anyway. So finding those things. So this right here is not a meatloaf. It's a plant loaf, right? 
And you can cut it just like that, make a sandwich, make those meatloaf, oh, remember those? Meatloaf sandwiches, mm, 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 mm. okay? That's French onion soup over here. These are barbecue cauliflower wings that are to die for, not gonna lie. The barbecue, the cauliflower is the base, cauliflower. These are my potato waffles. I could eat those every day without question. And the crunch, you bite into that, it's a crunch. Oh, so good. Anyway, learning to make those five and dressings. You need to have five or six favorite dressings that you like. And they're out there. No, I've never made a dressing I like. Nah, they're, they're out there. I promise you. You just got to try. Okay. And try a few. Again, once you find it, you're going to be like, yes, this is great. Okay. Now I want to introduce you to the National Health Association. If this is the first time you're hearing about it, I don't blame you because <laughs> they need better marketing. <laughs> But they've been promoting a whole food plant-based since 1948. This is their 75th anniversary. And they have a conference in Cleveland that is mind-blowing. It's absolutely, I will never miss it as long as I can, um, without question. It's absolutely amazing. And you can join the NHA. The website is healthscience.net or .org, .org, my bad. Uh, healthscience.org. And they for $35 a year, you get a magazine that comes out quarterly and that magazine you, you can't buy it any place they always have recipes in the back like several pages of that there's absolutely no advertising at all in the magazine at all okay it's 100 percent whole food plant-based and when you join you get access to the back website they have 18 years of the magazine that you can go back and read 18 years. Okay. They've got recipes and all kinds of other things. They started a podcast that's absolutely mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Um, and they have a newsletter they're just starting out with. So it's, it's probably one of the best organizations out there. Um, and there's, as I mentioned, if you go on Facebook, plant-based Cape Cod, you know, if you want to join that, just join it and just went and the questions go, I saw your lecture, then I'll know who you are. And you're like in. I'm very careful about who I let into the group. So anyway, I'm on Instagram, not so much Instagram anymore, but Twitter. Uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. I've got about 35,000 followers that have got about, I think it's like going on 400 videos um, right now. I've done some of the top incredible lectures, with some of the top people in the country, um, interviews, um, recipes, cooking videos and stuff like that. Oops. So uh, do do uh, check that out, and then <clears throat> sorry, and then before you begin, if you are going to switch to this lifestyle again, I cannot reiterate this enough. If you're dealing with hypertension and you're on medication, or you're dealing with type two diabetes, you really need to be under the doctor's supervision. You got to let your doctor know because your blood chemistry will change in as little as ten days. I kid you not; it will be that quick. And you're going to see changes. You're going to feel changes. And so you need to, your medication will most likely need to be, to be mon, you know, monitored and, and changed most likely. But here's the problem. Again, most doctors are not going to have a clue that this is happening because they don't understand the power of what's at the end of your fork. They don't get it. They're not trained in nutrition at all. Now, some, plant, plant, some doctors are, and that's Lori Marbus. She started plantbasedtelehealth.com. Uh, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. So if you are looking for a plant-based doctor, I cannot recommend them enough. Um, I know most of the doctors, you know, personally, we met at conferences and stuff like that, but they keep adding more. And I'm like, oh, who's that? You know, but they're all plant-based. They all understand the journey that your body's about to go through. And they can, they can guide you through this process. The other thing that you really need to do is to get some blood work, to have it as a baseline, okay? And you should be doing that like two or three times a year, full plan of blood work. Why? Because your blood work is like your report card, your body's report card. And it tells you if you're missing nutrients or things like that, especially for B12 and vitamin D. Those are two things you really want to keep monitoring, okay? Because those are important, okay, for a lot of other reasons. But anyway, that's the movie we're going to be showing from Food to Freedom. And that's a scene from that. And it took six people with type 2 diabetes. All of them got off their medications. I think one, except for one who dramatically 
reduced her medications, but all the rest got off of it. They didn't need it anymore. Okay. In 10 days, 10 days. Can you imagine how much money you would save for the amount of medications that you've been on? Like multiply this by like 10 years. There is no medication that is going to help you to heal your body. Not one, not read my lips, not one. Okay. Nothing out there. There's not one drug that is going to help you to reverse whatever it is that you're dealing with. It'll help you deal with some of the symptoms like hypertension. It's going to help you to, to get your blood pressure down, but it's not going to heal the underlying cause. And to heal your body, you have to get to the underlying cause of what is causing the issues. Okay. And by going plant-based, most things can be reversed. Okay. If not reversed completely, significantly, so that you feel so much better, you're taking a lot less medications, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, all of these doctors know what we're talking about. Okay. They all healed themselves in some way, shape, or form. Like um, Chris, uh, Chris Miller, lupus, so bad. Now it's reversed. Now, if she deviates, she'll have a flare up. But if she doesn't, she's fine. Okay. Autoimmune diseases can be reversed. Okay. Oof. So current programs, I already talked about those. Um, I also do a kitchen rescue where I literally come to your house. It's a whole day. It's a whole day. We clean out the fridge. We clean out the cupboards. We clean out the pantry. We throw everything away. We go grocery shopping. I teach you how to shop. We come back and we cook. And I teach you how to read the nutrition labels and all that good stuff. So um, anyway, uh, again, YouTube channel, do check that out and subscribe. Um, if you're looking for personal care products, I finally found a company. It's actually made here in the United States, in Rhode Island. The company was started by a girl who was 15 years old. She had read the Environmental Working Group. They did a body burden study on teenagers and found on average 279 chemicals in their bloodstream, okay, from these personal care products. Anything, anything that you put on your body, cream, lotion, shampoo, deodorant, toothpaste, is absorbed into your body in 26 seconds. Most of it is bioaccumulative that will stay in your body, okay? Um, because there's two basic types of chemicals. There's fat-soluble and water-soluble. It's water-soluble. It's going through your liver, your kidneys, and out. Your body still has to deal with it. But if it's fat-soluble, and a lot of these chemicals are, that are endocrine disruptors, they're going right into your fat cells, okay? And you're building this up and accumulating it. And your body to protect yourself is going to cover it with more fat, okay? So it's building these fat pockets in these cells. When it gets into your brain, it becomes what's called beta amyloid plaques. These plaques stop you from getting to a memory, okay? Let's say the computer is the memory, right? And I'm back here and I'm like, oh, what was her name? Oh, it was Mary. Got it, okay? And in the beginning, you know, these plaques form this pocket in front of the memory that you're trying, this, this synapse that you're trying to get to. In the beginning, you're like, what was your name? Oh gosh, it was Mary um, and Susie. It was, and then, oh yeah, it was Mary. Because now you just built another neural pathway around it. Okay, but when it gets to the point where there's so many paths blocked, and you can't remember. And that's the basis of Alzheimer's, okay? I have a whole series on that too. So anyway. Um, and I already talked about that. Oops, I got I got to point out right there. I am on the cover. That was one of mine. How toxic are your personal care products? Just wanted to point that out. I got on the cover. I did. I was I was so when he told me, "Yep, yeah, we're putting it's going to be a main article." I'm like, "You're kidding, really?" Anyway, and then we're doing. I'm connecting with Dr. Michelle Tollefson. She is with the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, one of the big poo poos in that that organization. She, she asked me to co-teach with her in Costa Rica. Costa Rica is in one of the blue zones. Blue zones are there's five places on this planet where people routinely live to be into their 90s, into, 100, into their hundreds without medication, health issues, problems, loss of memory, incontinence. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Costa Rica is one of those. It's in the, the, called the Nicoya Peninsula. And that's where this is going to be held. It's going to be at two five-star hotels. We're going to be swapping hotels. We're going to stay in one for a couple of nights and then the other one a couple of nights. I am personally taking care of the food. I'm, I'm, I'm talking with, it's a, it's a Michelin-trained chef. 
who's going to be doing all of our foods. And so I'm so excited for that. So that's crlifestyle.net. If you want to find out more information, it's going to be an immersive week into lifestyle medicine. If you guys are interested in that, love to get a good group of people together that are, this is going to be epic. This is going to be epic. I mean, this is going to be so much fun. But she was telling me that there's this volcano. It's extinct. They built a water slide. It's a thousand foot. <laughs> like I'm in on that. Let's go. I can't wait. So I'm excited about this. Anyway, okay, your your turn. What questions do you have for me? Yeah, it was a lot we covered. 